text is the familiar one for Pentecost, Acts chapter 2. But for every scripture, of course, there's a backstory. And uh, I want to tell you about this one. You remember that when the Jews were in the wilderness, that it says in the, in the book of Exodus that God walked ahead of them in the form of a cloud by day and a fire in the cloud at night. And at the end of Exodus, after, after the, uh, the tabernacle had been built and dedicated and everything was inside, the place where Israel was to meet God face to face at the point of the Ark of the Covenant in the Holy of Holies, it said that the Spirit of God descended through that cloud into that tabernacle. The glory so filled the tabernacle that that God's presence was so overwhelming that Moses couldn't even go in there. So God made his presence known in that way, in that very dramatic way then. Fast forward three or four centuries to the time of Solomon's dedication of the temple and we read in 2nd Chronicles chapter 7 the same thing happened when Solomon dedicated the temple at the end of his prayers when all the people were gathered around and everything was done this beautiful permanent structure to glorify God was made the offerings were all laid out the sacrifices and it said the Spirit of God descended as fire and consumed the sacrifice that had been offered to God, the whole offering, and so filled the temple that the priest couldn't even go in. So here we come to Pentecost, 50 days after Jesus' death and resurrection at Passover time, 10 days after Jesus had left his disciples and told them to wait until what he had promised came upon them. And so they were gathered in Jerusalem not knowing exactly what that was. But here's the account. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place, and suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting, the glory of God. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. And all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now they were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our own language, our native language, Parthians, Medes and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in, the, in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said they've had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd, Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only time, it's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and the glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. The word of the Lord. La palabra del Señor. Gracias a Dios. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you. Well, this is a day for celebration and remembering the good things that 
that God has done, how he came and filled the holy temple where the people were, and, and you cannot stand even in his presence. And so it's a time for celebration of we remember what God came and, and filled the disciples and, and gave them the power that they needed, the ability to be able to go forth and to serve the Lord and be witnesses. So remember that Jesus had said to the people, we talked about this last week, how before he left them, the apostles, he said that you are witnesses. I mean, he had spent all of that time, those, those three years, pouring himself into these men and women as well who were followers of Jesus and teaching them and showing them. They were listening to everything he had to say. They, they witnessed his miracles. They witnessed his, his death and resurrection. And so he said to them that you are my witnesses. He gave them all the proof that they needed so that they could go forth and know what the truth is and be able to share that and spread the word around um, to the rest of the world. But remember he told them, he said, wait, wait here in the city. Just wait until you receive the power. Don't try to do this on your own. You're not going to be able to do it by yourself. We need the power that comes from God. Nobody today can, can do the, the works of God just on our own power. We would, we would burn out. We would not be able to accomplish a lot and bear a lot of fruit. But with the power of God, it's possible. All things are possible. And so he told them, come and wait. Wait until you receive this power from the Lord, the gift that God has promised. And so last Sunday, I encouraged us as well in here to pray and wait and receive. Pray that we also, on this day of Pentecost, might we also receive a fresh infilling of the Holy Spirit, whether, you know, for our church as a whole and also for each of us. And we might say, well, it, why do we need that? Don't we already have the Holy Spirit in us? And because we believe, as in this church, we believe that when we receive the Holy Spirit, that we, we receive Christ, when we come to Christ and profess faith in Christ, invite him in, um, that we receive the Holy Spirit at that time. Because based on, on Romans 8, 9, where it says that if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he doesn't belong to Christ. And so it follows that if you do belong to Christ, then you have the Spirit. And so we believe that, that when we, we receive Christ as our Savior, then um, we ha receive the Holy Spirit. But, you know, the Word also says that we can quench the Holy Spirit. I mean, Paul tells us in, in 1 Thessalonians 5, 19, he says, do not quench the Holy Spirit, or in some translations, do not put out the Spirit's fire. And so... We can do that. You know, the, the Holy Spirit is a person who will come and go at will. And when we received him, yes, we, it's, a, it's a permanent thing with us, but we can quench that fire. We can put out the fire of God in us. And sometimes it's just through, um, sometimes we, we get a little lax in our spiritual disciplines. You know, we, we're not spending time with the Lord. We're not engaging in prayer. We're not reading God's word. We're not spending time with the Lord. You know how with any relationship, any relationship that we have, when you don't spend time and give time and priority to that relationship, things can get a little cool. Um, you know, I know Chris and I, being in the military for 20 years, we moved around a lot. And whenever we'd move, you know, we would try to, to stay connected with some of the folks that we had become friends with um, at different bases. And you can do that for a while, but if you're not intentional, about keeping up that relationship, things can grow a little cold after a while. Or, you know, what, after a while, it's just down to the, the Christmas card every year. And then after that, who knows? But thank God for Facebook, and we can stay in touch a little better. But, you know, we let our relationships, if we, if we grow cool with our relationships, even with God, um, we can, that the fire begins to go out. Um, you know, we're, sometimes we're just too busy and uh, not taking the time to be with the Lord. You know, for some folks, maybe they've experienced a tragedy and lost someone they loved, you know, before their, t what seemed to be before their time. And it can be very hard. Sometimes, you know, tragedy often will, for some folks, it'll drive them to the Lord, for, but for others, it, it drives them away as that pain is too much. You know, if we want to 
if folks are blaming God for what happened or questioning why did this happen to me. Um, sometimes it isn't just isn't something as severe as, as a tragic event in life, but sometimes people are carrying so much pain and woundedness. Maybe somebody in church said something stupid. It, it happens. Um, and people get hurt. And so they, they can walk away from church. And, and sometimes they're not just walking away from church, but they'll walk away from God as well. You know, people have woundedness and things like that that also, they moving away from God and that puts out that fire. They don't have it. Sometimes it's disobedience. Disobedience. If God is telling us to do things and we're being deliberately saying no, we're not going to do it. Um, because again, Paul wrote in Ephesians chapter 4, he says, don't grieve the Holy Spirit of God. You know, when, we, when we're disobedient, when we're not doing what God asks us to do, then you know, we grieve God's Spirit. And so all of these things you know, cause us to lose that fire of the Spirit within our hearts. And sometimes, dare we say, things can just grow a little stale. You know, if we've been walking with the Lord for a lot of years. In a church, maybe that's, that's more than a hundred years old. In a church where maybe, you know, we've had a pastor for the, a long period of time. Can things grow a little stale in here? You know, we do things that we've been doing for decades and decades because, well, that's what we've done. No, we've long since forgotten, where did this come from? You know, what's the why behind this? Why do we do this? And so it's just, well, because that's what we've always done. You know, we're, things can get a little stale. We need a fresh wind of the fire. We need God to come and fill us again. Yes, we've been filled with the Holy Spirit as we've accepted Christ as our Savior, but we need that fresh wind to come through and give us that new spark, that new task. You know, our God, we worship the God who's the creator of the universe. So he's a very, he likes creativity. He likes things to be new and fresh in the world. You know, I don't know how many times in the scripture it says, sing to the Lord a new song. You know, God likes things to be new. And sometimes you've finished what, you know, a task that God gave you to do. Maybe, you know, even for a church, maybe you, we've done what the assignment we had. But now it's time for a new assignment. Well, Lord, who are, what are you calling us to do now? And who are you calling us to reach in our community now? What's our new assignment? And so we turn back to the Lord. We go back and say, Father, here am I. Send me. What, what is our task? Fill us afresh with your Holy Spirit. I think every business or anything else that that goes on for a, for a long period of time. Every so often, they've got to kind of reinvent themselves. They've got to get that, that fresh vision, a fresh passion for the Lord. And so this is why we ask us to pray for ourselves, for our church, that God would give to us that fresh vision. Show us who he wants us to reach in our community. You know, there are 30 other odd churches in the, in the greater Arlington area every one of them doing good work, everyone to having an assignment, a different task, a part of this community to reach. Well, what's our share? Father, I know he's not calling us to do it all, but to do what our particular, who are our ones to reach in our community? And so I ask you also, as you think about your own life and, and um, looking in your heart and how is the Lord moving in your heart where is God calling you? Because, you know, as God has called us, every Christian is a minister of God. We all have a role to play. We all have that good news. We are all witnesses of what God has done in, in our lives, in our church, in our, in our families and such, in our relationships. And we are witnesses. We can tell the Lord or tell other folks what God has done. We can speak out the wonders of God, which is what they were doing here in this, in this scripture, speaking out the wonders of God as the fire came and gave them that passion to share. Peter standing up in boldness now to speak out and tell, this is what, this is happening, this is what God is doing in our midst. And so what is God put in your heart? Where is your passion what are you on fire to do? As I was tongues of fire, as the wind and fire come and filled your heart, what are you excited about? Where, 
um, is there a particular cause or something um, in the world, an issue or something that just gets you on fire and you're ready to step in. You know, we're to be the hands and feet of Christ in the world. God is, cares about the poor. He cares about the marginalized. He cares about putting this world right and bringing justice and truth to the world. And so what is our part in that? Where do you get on fire when you hear, um, see where God's at work in the community and you say, oh, I want, I, that really stirs my soul and I want to uh, take part in that. Because I think as we share these things with one another and talk about our passions with one another, maybe we'll see a common thread among us and, and that might say, ooh, there's something that maybe God would call, is calling us as a group, as our church to help with. Um, and that might help us to give some insight as to where God is leading us as a church. You know, if you're, maybe you're the only one who has a particular passion for something, that's okay too. There was only one John the Baptist and, and such, so God will still use you in that area. You know, for me right now, my passion, and I say now because, again, these things can change. The, the wind of the Spirit blows and, and moves us in different directions at different times. But right now, my passion is race, racism and, and fighting for racial righteousness. And so that's an issue that I feel very strongly about. And so it's like, ah, God has put that in my heart. And so I've become an advocate in that area. And so I'm praying that the Lord will give me that, that tongues of fire um, so that I can be an advocate and speak out boldly to help other folks like us to understand that, you know, this is still a problem. It is still an issue. It wasn't dealt with. It didn't just get over with in the 1960s or even the 1860s. And so that's my passion. What is God calling you? Where is your passion? Where is your heart? And if you're not feeling any kind of passion, and then, you know, let's be praying for that Holy Spirit to come and reignite something in our souls, something that would burn like fire within us, something, and that God would give us the words to speak and give us those tongues of fire to spread, spread the wonders of God. He said, this is what we hear. In verse 11, it said, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. And so God has a word for each one of us and something that he wants us to do. I'm glad that Darwin shared earlier about you know, the Holy Spirit coming and filling the temple to such a place you know, we are now the temple of the Lord. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Um, ourselves and gathered together as the body of Christ. And so we need that fresh anointing. We need that power to come from the Lord once again and to fill us up again. And so this morning we're going to pray and take time and ask the Lord to fill us once again as a church and as people as individuals so that we can carry this word we've got a good word to share he says in here that all who call on the name of the lord will be saved this is one of the most important passages in the scriptures all who call on the name of the lord will be saved well how are they going to call on the name if they don't know the name we've got to share that word with folks and so would god give us the power again we can't do it on our own we never can but with god's help all things are possible and so this morning, as we pray, I just invite you to, if you want more of the Lord's power, then, then let's have an attitude of, of palms up to receive from God. And let us go to the Lord in prayer. Oh, Father, oh, Father, we thank you for the promise of your Holy Spirit. I thank you, Lord, that Jesus said that you delight to give the Holy Spirit to all who would ask. Jesus said that if human beings who are evil know how to give good gifts to their children, how much more does the Holy Father want to give the Holy Spirit to all who would ask? And so, Father, we come this morning, we ask that you would pour out your Spirit upon us gathered here. Lord, we need that fresh wind. We need that fire in our hearts, down in our bellies, in our inner souls. That we would be on fire 
for your kingdom, that we would want to see your kingdom come on this earth and your will done on this earth as it is done in heaven. Lord, we cannot do it without you, but with you, all things are possible. Father, we, we want to join our hands, put our hands into your hand, Lord. Use us. Use us. Count us worthy, Father. In our frailty, in our brokenness, in our weakness, in our inability. Be glorified through these willing vessels. We don't have a lot to offer, but we offer what we have. We offer our lives and ourselves. Lord, fill us again. Fill us afresh with your Holy Spirit. Help us to have that attitude of expectancy. And trust and believe that you really are there and that you really do. Keep your promises as you always do. Thank you, Lord for the mercies we've seen in this church, the graces that have been poured out upon us, the blessings that we have received. Let us continue to serve you all the days of our lives. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.